Hey everybody, welcome to Mini Junkie, where you come for the miniature and terrain talk and you stay for the fire hose of dad jokes. So it's been a while. I've been I've been doing some painting and, and a lot of 3D printing of miniatures actually. I fell right into that hobby and got into it in a big way. I actually have four printers now, which is a bit much. Uh, I have two Ender 3s for printing terrain. In fact, they're printing almost all the time and they're going to create background noise on the videos. And I have two resin printers for miniatures. I started with the Elegoo Mars and I'd say I've printed, you know, a hundred miniatures and I've painted zero of them. And the truth is printing miniatures and printing terrain is a hobby all its own. It's really fun and it's, I don't know why I'm not painting them. I'm painting other things. I'm painting an Imperial Fist army. I'm painting... And some other things but the miniatures I print kind of just end up in a pile but it's kind of fun just to print them I can't explain it and just trying to get the print really crisp and nice and, and neat especially with um, resin and then with FDM it's a little harder to get layer lines there's a constant noodling with it Emil Emil over at uh, Squidmart did a whole video on this topic and talked about how it is very much a hobby but one that's really rewarding and, and, and again a lot of fun uh, sometimes I get emails from companies wanting to send me things companies or even just individuals who have a product or something they want me to talk about on my channel even though it's not even really the biggest channel and Creality actually reached out and they are the as you probably know the makers of the super popular Ender 3 the CR range of FDM printers etc and they wanted me to do a, a review of the LD I'm gonna look down here LD 002R so my first point in my review would be that that's not a very great name. I know the Ender 3 is a pretty cool name. Elegoo Mars, Anacubic Photon, Sonic Frozen. You know, they're more catchy. LD002R does, you know, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. So the first thing I do is come up with a little bit better branding for these resin printers. What I'll say is it deserves a good brand because it's a heck of a printer. I'm actually really liking it. And the elephant in the room that's a bit late to the party. The video I'm making is late to the party and the printer itself is late to the party. The video because it took a long time for the printer to reach me from China with COVID going on. And the printer because there's a basically a wave of, of new resin printers coming that use a monochrome uh, screen to do the printing which results in faster printing. Greg at 3D Printing Pro did a video explaining why that is, why those types of screens are better. And in fact the first one, well I think the Frozen Mini is the first one. I've never, I haven't used one. And also the Elegoo Mars 2 and Mars Pro 2 are also going to be using a monochrome screen. And I think the Mars really but regardless even though it's late to the party it's a really good printer i would say that all the pros i would say about this printer uh, that i'll list shortly would apply to i'm gonna guess are going to apply to their next release which is is almost certainly going to be a monochrome screen at resin printer i'm using a crystal ball i have no idea they haven't said as much but I mean, it just, it's a given. I, I will say that this one has been higher quality than the El Gumars uh, for sure, in terms of just build quality and usability. Now that said, if, um, you know, if you can find it at the right price and you're in the market to get a printer before the monochrome ones come out, then you could absolutely pick this up without any hesitation. It, it prints really nice miniatures and it does so, I would say pretty, pretty painlessly. I set it against several different layer times uh, to test it. I printed, you know, five or six of the same miniature to sort of see how the detail played out across different uh, layer exposure times, starting around eight, which was a, what I used for my Elegoo Mars and going all the way down to four before it failed. And it was even just a slight failure. So I'd say around five seconds per layer, I was getting nice quality and de decent printing speed. In terms of what I print, I print mostly with miniatures. I print Artisans Guild, pre-supported miniatures through their Patreon. For $10 a month, they release fantastic miniatures, a whole sort of thematic package every month. And they're pre-supported, I think, by Greg uh, 3D Printing Pro. So they're super easy to print, um, you know, really nice quality and remove the uh, supports with almost no support marks left behind. It's it's fantastic. And I, I'm kind of done with trying to do my own supports. I know you can learn how to do it. I find it not just time consuming, but kind of frustrating because I'm not great at it. I haven't been able to sort of get the knack. So I like Artisans and I like Titanforge. Titanforge does also incredible miniatures every month, 
for an amazing price on Patreon. Uh, and they come pre-supported as well. And no, nobody has paid me as far as those Patreons go to say those things. I'm just saying it because I am a patron and I am happy with them. Back to the machine. Uh, so the LD002R, again, um, really nice print quality down to about five second layers. It, it comes with a kind of like a rough surface build plate. The Elegoo is a smooth one. This one's kind of like a, a metal colored, I don't know how to put it. It looks like it's been machined or something. So it's got a little roughness to it. And I found the bottom layer adhesion, adhesion really strong. I don't think I use anything outrageous. Maybe it's 60 seconds on the bottom layer or something like that, first layer. And uh, I had to scrape hard with the plastic, plastic razor blade, I think they're called, to get them off. So the adhesion's really good on those plates. And the plate is pretty much self-leveling. It's incredibly easy to level. You follow the instructions, you don't even need, even need to use like a piece of paper or anything. And it stays level as far as I can tell. I've printed a number of things without re-leveling it. Some of the other cons, again, the build quality is, is really solid. It's, it's nice, it's metal, it's kind of sizable and hefty. Great touchscreen interface, comes with a lot of accessories, which is kind of standard I would say, but it even comes with like a, a paintbrush. I'm not actually sure why. It has a vat that has um, level lines marked on it. So you can see the level of, of resin you're adding to the vat, which is cool. It has a large lid and I find it's easier to see what I'm printing through the sort of orange colored lid on this one than I do the, the Mars, which is a fairly dark red. I find it quite difficult to see my printing through the Mars uh, cover, but I can see it really easily through the um, LD002R, that name just, ugh. It has a side-mounted USB port, which is really handy and easy to use, uh, better than being in the back. And it has a carbon filter, which I, I guess is cool. I don't smell the resin that bad ever when I'm printing. I have never had a problem. In fact, usually it's the uncured if i leave an uncured miniature lying around i might it might smell a bit but when i'm printing man, i don't even notice it i'll be honest the thing that smells is usually the cleaning and finishing um, liquids like isopropyl alcohol or i'm using methylated spirits and even acetone all of which are toxic and unpleasant for your body so be careful when you use these things and so to be clear i love the elegoo mars i've used again i got it months ago i've been using it like crazy i printed dozens of miniatures i again i painted none but i really like the machine it's just that honestly the the creality is is better it just works better it has better features so and it's kind of the same price right now but again, it's late to the price. So the only con is it's late in the life cycle for resin printing because the new wave is going to be monochrome screens. So you have to sort of weigh that against, you know, if you want to pick one up, maybe it'll be on sale or something like that. I don't know. There'll be a link below if you want to check it out on Creality's site. So they did send it to me for free. Yes, I'm giving it a good review, but it's because it's a good machine. If it wasn't, I would just give it not a good review because I don't, I don't really care. I'm not like a, you know... I'm not looking for a long-term sp sponsorship deal. I'm just giving you guys the straight goods on, on whether this is a decent machine, and it is. So that's all there is to this review. If you have any questions, leave them below, and I'll try and comment on, on them. Hey, if you found this interesting, you like the whole miniature and terrain and painting topic, go ahead and subscribe. That'd be cool. I have set my recording area back up this is sort of like classic mini junkie set so i'm trying to do more videos i don't know if i'll do a lot more of the like painting tutorial videos because i just don't know how many people really want to watch me just paint because the channel never really grew and the other channels about miniatures grew exponentially and they don't often do those sort of painting tutorials so it's more just about the hobby and all the interesting topics that we can cover there and i'd actually like to talk more about 3d printing and possibly even do like a piece on how to paint like 3d printed fdm terrain uh, marvel crisis protocol buildings things like that so we'll see but i'm hoping i'm back a little more regularly thanks for watching i'll see you next time